It's time for the polling station on Star Sports TV with Johnny Ward and William Kajani. We've two very uh, interesting things to talk about today. One is the latest on Scottish independence. And for much of the show, then we're going to talk about what's going on in the US. Biden apparently in an unassailable lead now against Trump in the US election. And William Kajani is likely to eat a little bit of humble pie having tipped Trump not so long ago. But what is happening on the Scottish independence uh, front, William? You are a modest man. You, you know, sometimes we get it wrong very rarely. But Indeed. No, I did. Um, the whole situation changed. I gave Trump even a better chance than we were. Um, but I do think this is now becoming an election Biden has to lose. Um, but actually, I do think it's interesting um, we start with a different topic, Scottish independence. Yesterday, there was a bombshell um, poll dropped by Ipsos Mori that gave, yes, 58% when you took out the undecided. Um, that's a 16-point lead, I believe, on the no cause, um, or the no cause, which is basically wanting to stay within the United Kingdom. Now, we've seen and we've talked about before this sustained support for Scottish independence. Um, but now, you know, that's a really, really big margin. And one thing or a couple of things I found very interesting about it. Number one, um, there were only 6% of people who were undecided. You know, for such a very, very low. Issue, yeah, um, for such a polarizing issue to have such a small, slice of persuadables i think is very significant it's like you go into a room with 16 scots and only yeah. one of them hasn't a strong opinion on it yeah um it is the defining issue there in the same way that brexit was the defining issue in, in the uk politics why or widely but um, especially i think in england um at least since the referendum was called since it became an issue the second really interesting thing of all the categories only one age group now wants to stay in the United Kingdom, it's the 65 and over. Now, we aren't close to referendum. You, I think for a mandate, everybody agrees you need to have next year's Hollywood elections taking place, but the SNP are one to 20 with us to win that election. It's really a matter of how many seats. Um, and then the pressure's going to be on. Um, you could see it possibly happening maybe I mean, we've got a market and we're, I think it's 10 to 11 that you could have a Scottish India F2 before the next general election. I think that's logistically quite hard. But um, the longer it goes, the bigger a sword it's going to be. And this is all happening um, pre-Brexit. It's all happening pre-trade deal or not. Now, you might get a short, patched up trade deal. But people in Scotland as a whole don't like Brexit. And that's done. It's going ahead. And... The differences between what a Scottish administration would be like, um, which it does have a lot of devolution, and the UK as a whole, especially Westminster, are really being shown. And I think, you know, that's a serious, we're at, we're at a serious crossing point now in terms of the union. Um, and I think there will be plenty of people who will try and take advantage of that somehow, possibly by even tying up their money for a few years in the next India F market. Fascinating stuff. And, you know, when you consider if that um, dem demographics would suggest that maybe some of obviously some of the elder people pro um, union will pass away in the next few years as well. So they might even actually extend the, 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 the gap in terms of those who want and those who don't. Yeah, um, there will be a demographic change. Um, I think it's odds on you have it after the next election. So that's five years of people becoming old enough to vote even if you keep it at just 18 um for the voting age that's a different electorate you're appealing to and um you know conservatives have a real battle on their hands to keep scotland in the union and i think the markets reflect that but some might say hypothetically there is still some value to be had and i think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens and clear potential ramifications for Ireland and Northern Ireland as well down the line. But more to, uh, I suppose, closer to um, the end of this year, where we're really closing in on this US election. Four to 11 Biden now, two to one Trump. Um, I imagine his voters are probably getting a little bit despondent at this stage. Um, no, they don't believe the polls. Um, <laughs> they, if anything, think, <laughs> they think 
plenty of people um, who don't believe the polls and who think Biden will store some sort of collapse or who can't contemplate him being president are actually backing Trump still. And that you can get a good price now, um, bigger than he was, I think, at any point, really, um, even pre-COVID, actually. Mm. So some people will take advantage of that. Some of them will hedge. Um, some of them will look to see if they can get a market move. Let's see if the polls do narrow a bit. But it's all one directional traffic. You know, the average lead is now 10. Um, there's no way I think that Biden loses that much of a lead or loses so much of that lead. He needs to lose about six points before you get jittery about the Electoral College. He's up by five in the battleground states, but again, that's an average and that's solid. Can Trump still make a fight of it? I think he can, but but he's running out of time. He's just running out of time. Um, he's had a lot of rallies. He seems, you know, okay. Um, certainly okay enough to speak, but there are still these policy questions, I think. And, and it matters more now, you know, what sort of the president the US has leading it. People aren't a big fan of his coronavirus response. Um, they feel the pandemic's been mishandled. Um, plenty of people have just had enough of them anyway. That's what they're telling pollsters. Um, interesting to note, and this is just the one thing that will be in the back of my mind, only 13% of respondents, um, or 30%, I should say, of US citizens, registered voters, believe that, or they have a great deal of confidence that the election will be free and fair. Mm. I think that's something just to keep in mind um, if things become tight, but Biden is winning by so much, you know, 10 points. We're, we're now looking actually to sort of the numbers and we've got some markets up. We've got an electoral handicap for Biden, giving away 100 electoral votes. I think it has to be a big interest. Um, Obama did that to Romney, um, even for a relatively tight win. Um, Trump, because of the nature of the electoral college, I think he gave about 70. To Clinton so it absolutely can be done the averages show that it can and I think we're heading for a blowout at this point yeah check out the website for markets all those markets uh, in terms of Trump's popular vote share um, over and under the electoral college votes um, as William mentioned and state betting as well uh, that was the polling station this week and uh, thank you very much William thank you very much and we shall see you next week